Hey, all, welcome back to Fire and Water Cooking. I'm Darren, of course. Today, I'm gonna do something really different. I haven't done this. I was inspired to do this because I was at a barbecue competition a couple weeks back and uh, selling my sauces and stuff and just kind of talking to some of the barbecue guys. And it got me this idea. So you can see in the title what we're doing. Well, I'll be right back, kind of show you what we're gonna do today. I'll be back. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter, sous vide and chilling from fire and water. All right, guys, so like the title says, that's what we're going to do. We're going to compare three different kinds of St. Louis style pork ribs the different breeds. So, like I said, I am actually a certified Kansas City uh, Barbecue Society judge here, KCBS judge, and I've judged a few uh, contests on my own. And um, I actually was at one a couple weeks back. I was actually there selling my seasonings and sauces. I wasn't able to get in to be a judge for that particular contest, so I decided to sign up to sell. I am gonna be judging in one in about a month and a half. So. But I talked to some of the couple of the different barbecue competitor teams there, and one of them, the guys set up beside me, they actually took some uh, took their money, uh, a lot of their uh, uh, money for their funds for the meat, and they spent it on a really expensive brisket, the Snake River Farms Gold Wagyu. A lot of the competitors will use that because it's a really high quality, high fat content uh, piece of meat. And I asked them, I said, well, you spent the money on that. What did you do as far as your, for ribs and chicken and all that? And he said, oh, just bought whatever was cheapest on sale. Like they just bought commodity ribs at the local butcher shop that, um, or even at the local grocery store. So they didn't really spend any extra money on getting it, trying to get any better uh, ribs go. So I decided to say, well, what would happen since all these barbecue competitors will spend all this money on a brisket if they started buying Berkshire ribs instead of just regular commodity ribs or if they bought Iberico ribs. Both of these are available on Wild Fork. You can actually get all three of these on Wild Fork. So I decided, hey, I have access to them. Let's go ahead and try it. I'm gonna go ahead and cook all three of these up and see if there is much of a difference as a judge. I'm gonna look at it as if I was a judge, see if I could get any difference in flavor, taste, if I would rate them any better than I would the standard ones. So I'm gonna to try to cook them all at the same time, using the same temperature, using the same rub, the rub I'm gonna use. I'm gonna mix some of my uh, blueberry and black garlic with some of Meathead's uh, pork rub, Meathead from AmazingRibs.com's pork rub, kind of make it a little bit sweeter and savorier and that blueberry i wanted to cut back on the blueberry because it uh it does make the the ribs like a really really dark so i figured i'd switch it up and just mix it in with some of the regular pork seasoning so i don't want it to be about the seasoning as much as i want it to be about the different heritage breeds of pork and if there's much difference so all the rubs are going to be the same. We're going to cook them all in the same time, in the same cooker, using the same wood and all that. It's just going to be comparing the commodity ribs that I bought here. These are Publix. These are Smithfield Farms, probably. These Iberico, which are high-end. You know, they feed them acorns, all that kind of stuff. And the Berkshire Heritage Breed, which is another higher-end breed of pork. So. Let me get these out, guys. We'll get them seasoned up, and we'll get the smoker going. I'll be back. All right, guys. So here they are right next to each other. So my first one here is the Commodity. The one in the middle is the Berkshire. The one on this end is the Iberico. Just let, letting you know. Look and see how the different fat layers are. That Iberico is just layered with fat. I'm not going to trim these guys. I'm just going to remove the uh, membrane on the back, and that's it. Let's get them seasoned up. All right, guys. So here they are. Like I said... So I kind of separated the commodity from the Berkshire because it's really easy to tell this Iberico from the commodity. This one this is a little bit shorter 
than that one, but I just kind of wanted to make it so you guys could understand. So this is the commodity one, the regular grocery store. This is the Iberico, which is the higher end, Spanish, special breed, fed a special diet. And this is the Berkshire heritage breed, probably from around North Carolina or something up there. And that's um, the difference. I did pull the membranes off, but I'm gonna do it guys, it's just, Hit these I'm not going to use any kind of binder I never do there's plenty of moisture on the outside of these so I'm just going to put a little bit of the rub on all of these just kind of push it in to the meat and then flip it over and then do the same thing on the other side <music> I'm just going to get a nice coat on each side. Let them brine in a little bit. Then I'll be back when we're putting them on the smoker, guys. All right, guys. So here I am using the Kevery. Like I said, it's uh, going to make, make sure I can get all these ribs in there. I'm um, going to light this with my grill gun, get it going. I'm using a pecan for the wood, just scatter it around the charcoal box. I'll be right back. All right, guys, my smoker's up to temp, just just under 300. I'm going to cut it back down. I wanted you to take a look at those ribs, how they set up there with the rub on them. Iberico at the top, Berkshire at the bottom. I had two uh, slabs of those Iberico, so <laughs> I went ahead and seasoned up the other one. We're going to have them both. I don't want just one slab of ribs sitting in my freezer or fridge. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Smoke's rolling pretty cool, pretty good. I'm going to be able to put two racks on each smoker rack here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the commodity ribs right here on top with one of the Ibericos right next to it I do have the uh, heat deflector in here so this is cooking indirect I'm gonna put the Berkshire down here on the lower rack and that other rack of Ibirico right here next to it. And what that's going to do is when this Iberico fat starts dripping it's going to drip on the other Iberico ribs so I don't have much cross contamination of flavors there so see how that works out for us. I don't we're not going to probe these at all I'm just going to make sure I'll check on it after about an hour and a half or so. Usually we're going to run these about three and a half to four hours at uh, about 275 or so. We're right at about 275 now since I opened that door, but I'm going to cut back the vents a little bit so that we can kind of run this right around 250, 275. We should be good. I have to adjust it after a little while I will all right I'll see you when we're checking on them for the first time all right guys it's been about two hours and we'll take a look at these all right they're starting to pull back from the bones already there and I'm going to give them a little spritz and we'll give them another hour or so and see how they turn out I'll be back well guys my microphone died on me so I'm going to have to go ahead and do it this way but these Iberico ribs they came out really good the only thing I did not like about them they would not win as far as appearance goes there's too much fat 
on the surface here and it would have been really hard to trim them up to make them look any good and once they rendered all that fat there wasn't a whole lot of meat left on the bone so i don't think these would win any uh competition even the flavor was a little off-putting because it was just way too much fat i think um, the berkshire ones though here in the middle actually were really good the uh, appearance on these would be really good as well i think these would hold their own um, and probably push you over the edge if you were compared against the commodity pork because they did they were just a little bit more juicy a little bit more flavorful than these uh, commodity pork uh, ribs here now they like i said they were bigger they were more meatier these commodity pork ones but the uh, i think the berkshire actually held their own would have been a little bit better as far as flavor goes so there you have it guys Berkshire versus Iberico versus commodity pork. Um, check them all out. Check out Wild Fork. Make sure you check out Fire and Water Cooking Edible Creations Seasonings and Sauces. I'll see you on the next one.